What's up guys, Bloodshed here, bringing you a Firebird mirror image push build for Diablo 3, Reaver of Souls, patch 2.7.0, and season 23. This has been one of the most highly requested videos, even a couple weeks into the season, people asking me questions about Firebirds. So my goal in this video is to alleviate as many questions as possible, show you what's rank one on the leaderboard, show you what I'm doing, and maybe make things just a little bit more clear for everybody. Let's start off with the Firebird set and what it does. Now it got redesigned this time around. So the two piece set, it says disintegrate ignites enemies. So as you hold down disintegrate, it could be any rune. It doesn't have to be the fire rune. It puts a little ignite debuff on them, probably like an ode to the old set, causing them to take 3000 weapon damage per second until they die. So once they're dotted, they're pretty much done. They're going to be dotted unless you like change zones or something. They're just going to be burning alive. And that's the base for our whole build. We have to disintegrate and ignite everything. So you always see people spamming this. I prefer the Chaos Nexus rune, but you could technically use any one you want. And finally, with the two piece, you have a cheat death. So every 60 seconds, a meteor falls from the sky and revives you, which you wouldn't need to carry unstable anomaly with the build because you have your follower cheat death and then you have your set. So this is kind of overkill here. And, um, I'm only using it because early season the servers have been absolutely horrible so this is my disconnect protection here having three cheat deaths but later on when i'm doing my ultimate pushes toward the end of the season i'm just going to strip away them and probably move into elemental exposure which i'll get into later the four piece casting disintegrate adds combustion stacks that reduce the cooldown of teleport by two percent and gives you 80 percent damage reduction while maintaining the stacks so as you hold it down you can see they're building 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 all right, so this is going to give you that damage reduction. And that's the second piece of the puzzle for how we do our damage is the combustion stacks themselves. So for the two and four piece, you don't have to worry about anything, but literally holding down disintegrate and it gives you unlimited teleports as well. And that's pretty much all you have to do is disintegrate and teleport, jump in those Oculus rings and you're good to go. The six piece set bonus, you gain 5,000% increased damage while ignite is applied to a target. Hitting an ignited enemy with a non-channeling fire spell does ignite damage multiplied by combustion stacks. So remember, all we're doing is holding down disintegrate, igniting all the targets around us. And all the six piece is saying is step two, hit with a non-channeled fire spell like Spectral Blade, for instance, which we normally don't cast this. Sometimes I do if the enemy's like at 1% health and the images kind of run, you know, sometimes they just look at them, they just run in their own direction, they do what they want, the AI is kind of bad on them. So if the enemy is super low HP, I might use Flame Blade just to get that last 1% health down. But we just need to apply a non-channeled fire spell, and that's why you see mirror images, because the mirror images copy spells on your bar, they definitely favor Flame Blades all the time and just whop the enemies to death. Obviously we can't use flame, a Spectral Blade Flame Blade while we're holding down Death Wish, so there is two types of builds. There is the mirror image death wish version, and then there is the spectral blade fragment of destiny version of the build because the fragment of destiny gives you 50% attack speed, right? And you're going to be attacking really fast, right? So with the spectral blade fragment of destiny version, you're stacking max attack speed everywhere. So you can hit as fast as possible, applying those stacks. And then with the Death Wish version is more of a passive channeling version with no attack speed, so you don't need any attack speed whatsoever with this version of the build. I'm mostly going to talk about the mirror image in this video as it's the stronger version, and that's what I've been playing on stream. It's really cozy and easy to play, easy to grind, paragon, push with while you're reading chat. I do still get a lot of questions on how the six piece bonus work. It's not a classic traditional six piece bonus where you get X amount of damage to Spectral Blade or X amount of damage to Disintegrate. So the six piece bonus puts an enchantment on your spells and abilities. This is supposed to be a meteor by the way, right? So for instance, if you were to use meteor, it would apply one fire combustion stack to the target. And then if you were to use like flame blade, this sword is a flame blade, it's applying, it's almost like a weapon enchantment. It's putting like a fire enchantment on your flame blade. So every time you hit with flame blade, it's applying combustion stack. So it's like damage, 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 damage. So if you have a lot of attack speed, it's applying it really fast. Where if you had one big meteor, right, it's just applying that one big stack. So you can see why people use flame blades. So with mirror image, it works the same way. It's enchanting these dudes to apply your fire stacks with each one. So you can see how it's so powerful because 
your job is to apply that fire enchantment to the enemy, to your target, right? Like I say, your target was right here. Now you have four dudes applying your combustion stacks versus just you by yourself. You'd be here in the middle applying the one stack, you know? So it just, it's more effective to understand how it's applying the damage. I like to look at it as like a, an enchantment on your spells and abilities. Let's talk about the rotation of the build since that's the most important. And we'll go into the spells and abilities after that. So as soon as I enter the rift, use magic weapon deflection if you have it. Not every build uses it. Then we're going to hold down disintegrate. Remember to build up our stacks. And now we're good. Now we can teleport at will. And we're going to port around while tapping disintegrate in transition and igniting enemies looking for an elite to kill. So let's do that. It's already there. So we have an elite right at the door. I'm going to ignite all of them and get ready for phase two. Phase two would be to use mirror images about a second, a little bit over a second before fire cycle hits. That way you have a, you're casting during the full duration of fire spell. If you're already casting, holding down disintegrate before fire that one second, then your death wish is triggered, right? So I'm not in the perfect position right now. So I just jumped in here, so I might wait for the next cycle and um, show you guys how to do it the right way, right? And I like to tap teleport and explosive blast because in transition, we want to keep up our EB stacks here. It's really important. That's how you get your damage reduction and you're actually doing a lot of damage with EB, right? So for instance, I would set up and try to get them in position for a mirror image. And again, I missed my cycle again because I'm just explaining this. But anyway, you pop mirror image and then you're holding down. And as I'm holding down disintegrate, I'm also tapping explosive blast with my finger. It's really hard to number lock when you're holding something down. So I just manually push it, right? So I go one, two. And then when I see an elite, I go one, two, three. So it's just teleport EB, teleport EB. And then I also tap disintegrate. This is how I play it. And there might be other ways to play. And then it just becomes muscle memory and I don't even think about it, right? It's one, two and tap. And then here's an elite here. And, and then that's one, two, three. Then I'm going to use mirror images, but I'll wait for cold cycle. That way we can have it ready for fire. So here's cold and I'll just cast it now. And the mirror image gets CC. Sometimes they stand there and do nothing. And sometimes I'll manually cast. You can see I can, you're doing a little bit of damage manually casting, but then you can always just cast your images again and then you're good to go. Ideally, you don't want to lose squirts, which we have tons of shields in my version of the build. You don't want to lose Taeguk. Death Wish takes a second to ramp up. So you want to have all your spells and abilities for that big rotation, you know, ignite, jump in those Oculus rings, watch for fire cycle, jump in between the elites. I notice if you're like right on top of the elite, it has a higher chance for them to hit the target. And for speeds anyway, you can manually cast it or you can just cast it off cycle because it's no problem because you're, you know, we're really strong for this level right now. So we've been doing like three minute 114s. Let's maybe uh, talk about things of problems you might have. By far, the number one question I get is blood. How do you not run out of resource, right? It's because of this little offhand that says uh, critical hits grant for arcane power. We call it APOC, Arcane Power on Crit. I don't have reduced resource cost anywhere but the captain set, my shoulder, and the weapon. You don't need it on your weapon. It just happened to roll there. I definitely would try to get it on your shoulder, though, and then obviously you get the 20% with captain, and then you get it in your Paragon as well. That, that should be plenty. That's like 40% reduced resource cost, and you're good to go. Make sure you're hitting the target. If you're doing speeds and you're running out of resource, you can switch to the Calamity Rune. Um, it does like a damage radius around your character and that actually procs APOC when it crits. And of course you want crit, it's arcane power on crit. So make sure you have at least 50% crit. Wizard has it pretty easy because we're not rocking double weapons. You can't dual wield, right? You should have crit on your offhand and that's going to make up for it, right? So even without the offhand, I still would have 50%. So definitely make sure you have crit everywhere. And at minimum, I would say is 50%. Another popular question I get is why the hell are you using invigorating gemstone blood? Well, I recommend you use enforcer gem as again, the images damage doesn't matter. So even though they are pets and they do get affected by enforcer gem, it's useless, right? It's just such insignificant damage. It's really just, we just use it. So they take 90% less damage because your pets do die. The higher and higher you push, 
the more and more damage they take and they die easier. So I'm currently rocking a 127 solo GR and I have used Invigorating Gemstone still, not Enforcer Gem. So my pets stay alive throughout the whole COE cycle and that's when I do the brunt of my damage anyway. So that's pretty much all that matters to me right now. I'm sure at some point I'm gonna have to switch over, but it's nice to know that you have options. The reason why, again, I'm using the Invigorating Gemstone is I absolutely hate being crowd controlled. It triggers me so much that, ah, uh, just thinking about it right now. So you can see, I just leveled it up to 25. At level 25, you're immune to control and pairing effects, pretty much all CC across the board. And I do get this healing received, which maybe I should level it. That way I get more of the Templar's healing. So that would be some kind of nice hardcore synergy there. I just haven't got around to it yet. I've been putting on augments and just having fun progressing. So again, I recommend Enforcer unless you're just a weirdo like me. Another question I get is why aren't you using the Endless Walk set? Because if you look on the leaderboard, you know, the rank one boys are using that. And I definitely recommend using the Endless Walk set. Again, I just do what I do. I like my own versions of the build. Like that's kind of my shtick. I like to just play my way. So if you ever want the best version of the build, it's here on the leaderboard. You can always see. So you can always look at my guide, look at my build, look at the leaderboard and make your own version of the build. That's kind of part of the fun, right? If you do happen to go with the Endless Walk set, make sure you have Life on Hit on your Bracer, or you can also get it on your weapon, or even if you're on your gloves. It's not ideal. I'd rather take double crit, cooldown, main stat on your gloves. But yeah, try to get Life on Hit somewhere because you're going to be a little bit more vulnerable. My version of the build is a massive battle tank, right? You have the 80% damage reduction from the orb, 80% from the set. I have a unity that also gives me more elite damage with AW guilds. I get to use Ashnagar's Bracer. You can easily swap out Ashnagar's for Mantle of Channeling though. Mantle of Channeling does hit harder. And then obviously I'm rocking Galvanizing Ward. I even considered dropping Unstable for like uh, Dominance or something funny. But endgame I probably will swap Unstable Anomaly for Elemental Exposure. One trick you can do, Elemental Exposure, damaging enemies with Arcane, Cold, Fire, or Lightning will cause them to take more damage from your attacks for five seconds and you can stack different types to get a bigger bonus, kind of like a Talrasha set. One thing not everybody knows is your weapon counts toward that stack. So since my Death Wish has lightning, ideally you, you want lightning or cold, since you're already using fire and arcane spells down here. So if you can get lightning or cold in your weapon, you would get the full bonus of elemental exposure. And this is probably what I'm gonna do late game. I'm gonna slowly strip away survivability and build into more power, right? Make my big end game push. Another question I get is, Blood, why no Wand of Woe, man? So, more explosive blasts mean more damage. Yes, your Chain Reaction EB does apply Fire Stack. This is a significant amount of damage. And one of the main reasons why I put so much damn cooldown everywhere. Because more EBs that you have, you're doing more damage across the board. But the extra three additional blasts from the Wand of Woe do not apply your six-piece Combustion Stack. It's like it works off chain reaction for whatever reason, but it doesn't work off Wanda Woe. Maybe it's the proc off of a proc scenario, but yeah, it doesn't work. That's why nobody uses it. Sometimes I say, hey, how come you don't use um, teleport fracture? Because if you don't know, fracture leaves mirror images behind and then you can get two more images and that's super meta, right? And the answer is sadly, no, they do not apply combustion stacks. Otherwise that would be pretty poggers to have permanently two mirror images out. We just go with safe passage. That's the strat. For speeds, you can go Wormhole or Calamity for resource like we talked about. None of the free mirror images work, just the spell. Also, people always asking, why you got red gems in your gear blood? What is, what is up with this? Well, um, the main stat of wizards is intelligence. It gives you all resist. So we have tons and tons of all resist. So the armor helps balance out my kit and it does synergize with other things. Like if you have armor potion or whatever you use, I always use armor gems with intelligence based classes, but if you never lose your squirts buff or you're using the endless walk set and you're tanky AF, you never take damage, use Topaz, use those intelligence gems, take, you know, add more damage to your build. It's really easy to do. For followers, you have three options, obviously. I would say a Scoundrel's the number one DPS with all his crit, guaranteed crit circles and damage abilities. And then Enchantress would be close number two with her cooldown. Remember the cooldown gives you damage with the captain set. You don't need her attack speed though, you just want her cooldown mostly. My option on hardcore is the Templar. He has a 
five second immunity, like a cheat death, which is basically like my disconnect protection as the servers have been so bad this season with the freezes and the lag. With all three followers, you're gonna use Unity if you need it, if you're using my version of the build. If you're not, you can go with Weird Protector or whatever ring you want here, Bull Cathos Wedding Ban or something. Um, with all three followers, you're gonna want Oculus Ring as it gives you up to an 85% multiplicative ring of power. So stand in them if possible, but stay close enough if you can for Audacity. That 30% damage is really good. And you need to be close enough for EB anyway to do your damage. So don't always go into an Oculus Ring. Try to get the best of both worlds. With all three followers, you're gonna wanna have a free pair of Nemesis Bracers. With all of them, you're gonna wanna have Flavor of Time as it's really good. And one thing that's also really good, maybe that's a little slept on, is Ice Climbers. Yeah, they make your follower immune to freeze and immobilize effects. And it really helps them move with you through the rift. And sometimes they get stuck, you think they're not following you. It's because they're getting, you know, CC'd to all high hell, right? Homing pads don't seem to work on Wizard that well. They work on my barb perfectly, so this will probably get patched soon. But I, with my character anyway, I notice all kinds of bugs with them. I have a Court of Shurma. It gives a, like a blind field on the battlefield and it reduces the chance they have to hit me, which is kind of cool. You can use the Blinding Faith as well. This is kind of like a mix between... I use barb to farm keys. That's why I don't have a Sage set or a Cane set here. I just have like random stuff. But those are the necessary things you need to look for. Maybe I'll do like one little half of a rift or something play through just to kind of show you again teleport eb tap disintegrate you can see i have all my buffs perfectly lined up because i'm tapping everything as i'm moving and it might seem like a lot of work but um it's pretty chill like i guess the muscle memory kicks in and i'm able to keep up my tegook and all my buffs in the process looking for an elite i'm just gonna pop mirror image here jump in oculus ring especially this is kind of like a speed level for me right Cast and hold down. Make sure they're all ignited. You always see me spinning around. We're about to hit fire cycle. I have my images out. Tap it. I mean, this is kind of like a, not a GG rift either, right? This is just the first one that we found. Here we go. A little early before cold cycle, but again, for the speed level, you can just be chill with it. It doesn't have to be that serious. Try to get them all to hit. Oh, I think he's a teleporter. He jumped away from me. Okay. Let's wait for the COE cycle. Here we go, here comes fire. Get those deeps in there. Um, you can see everyone would come in stream, right? And they're like, yo blood, how can we never take damage, man? <laughs> uh, it's mostly because of the shields, right? That's why I like to play this version. It's really cozy for me to like Netflix and chill or like read Twitch chat and not have to worry about me getting procced every second or it doesn't require so much micromanaging with the setup. You can see how high. So I've been farming Paragon with this level currently. Again, all solo, just self-leveled augments or anything like that. Let's head up the stairs and see. So this is like attainable by anybody, I guess is what I'm saying. It's not like I got boosted or anything. It's just all just self-grinded. So anyone could do it. Just make sure you keep your buffs up. And um, again, you can go endless walk set also, like you're teleporting the whole time. So you're actually not walking. So you have your maximum buff up pretty much the whole duration. So again, we got free NEMS, free flavor of time. We're gonna get these sick pylons here. And just make sure everything's dotted. That way when we do get images, they get destroyed. Uh, late game, again, I could probably, I see myself going to maybe a different version of the build, but I got a 127 down and I, I feel like we easily can break into the 130s with fishing. I haven't really fished for like hours and hours. We just kind of, actually the whole, the whole push is actually on my Let's Play video. So you can actually watch our push. We pushed from 121 to 127 on our last Let's Play. Maybe I'll link the Let's Play in the description. That way you guys can see. Um, I will be documenting most of our push journey so you guys can watch it. And I do like my invigorating gemstone. Imagine like, you know, you're just like watching TV or whatever, reading chat, and then you get CC'd and then stunned. It's annoying. I hate it. So that's why I run with it. And they don't die yet. They haven't seemed to die too much. I mean, sometimes there's like molten and frozen pulse everywhere and they get, they get murked. But I've noticed on average they last throughout the duration of one 
COE cycle. So like one fire cycle or whatever, they seem to be okay with. If you got any kind of value from this video, a like would help me out so much as it helps the YouTube algorithm. I have tons of social media links in the description below. I'm gonna link my Let's Play if you wanna watch more Firebird gameplay. You can subscribe on Patreon, Twitch, to show your support. This is kind of a long video. Thanks again for everything. I appreciate all the support. This is Bloodshed and I'm out of here. Peace.